Okay, so today we're going to be looking at Adobe Anywhere in the Cloud, delivered by A-Frame. I'm Rory McVicker, Head of Product here at A-Frame, and I'm going to be stepping you through our integration with Adobe Anywhere for Video, paying close attention to the value that we can offer as a combined solution for typical post-production workflows. Okay, as a note of context here, if you're new to A-Frame, A-Frame is the cloud production platform for video. So we provide one central place into which disparate and dispersed working teams can upload high resolution, broadcast quality, professional video and its associated production materials. We then store that and keep it safe and make redundant backup copies for disaster recovery. And then we provide a simple browser-based user interface which allows for collaboration and dispersed production workflow management doing things like assembling shots, adding metadata, collaborating around review cuts and distributing content onto wherever it needs to go next. So this is the A-Frame user interface. Each one of these thumbnails is representative of a clip that's been uploaded to the project. So if I double click on the clip, I begin viewing the video that it represents. This is an H.264 proxy that I'm viewing in the browser, but we also have an original asset that underlies this clip which we'll be using when we come to the edit. On the right hand side of the page you'll see that there are a number of timecode specific comments that have already been added by my project team. When we move to the edit, each one of these comments will become a marker in our seamlessly integrated edit integration workflows. Simply put, a comment in A-Frame is a marker in the edit. Let's use the filter to narrow down our selection to a group of assets that we want to work with. Okay, so that filter request has just scanned through all of the metadata, whether that's timecode based, title, summary, or associated XMP metadata, and returned just this list of eight clips. So let's open them in the player. Again, we've got a number of different timecode based markers. And what I'm going to do here is use the playlist tool to pull out the clips that I don't need. So I'm not going to use that clip. I'm also not going to use that one. And now I'm happy with my shot selection. I'm going to create a collection here and call it Selects. When I click out of the reviewer, you'll see that the newly created collection is loaded on the page. And I've got a number of different options that I can apply to this collection. Let's give it a summary so that the rest of the team know what this package of content is intended for. So let's say Demo Reel 2015. Now, in an ideal world, what you want is to just push a button and send all of this media, all of these locators on the timeline, and all of these clip description summary notes that I've added to the clips straight to the edit. That's exactly what we've done with our integration with Adobe Anywhere for Video. So if I click on this button, immediately there's a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship linked between the A-Frame collection and the Adobe Anywhere production. So anytime an, I add an asset to this collection, it'll appear in the edit. Conversely, anytime I add any metadata to any of the shots within this collection, that'll be pushed automatically to the edit. And it's bi-directional. So if I add any metadata or shots to the edit, they'll also appear in my A-Frame collection. So a really tight uh, integration between the two environments. So at this stage, I'm going to switch to Adobe Premiere. I'm going to log into Adobe Anywhere using my standard A-Frame credentials. And when I click on Open Anywhere Production, you'll see a list of all of the productions that I currently have access to on the Adobe Anywhere server, including Selects, which we know is for the demo reel for 2015. When I click Open, I have immediate access to all of the clips that I selected and also the metadata that was gathered with those clips. So let's take this clip for example. You can see all of the timecode specific notes that we added in A-Frame have come through into the edit. When I hit play, the video begins playing back immediately. Now it's important to mention that I'm currently editing in London. The server is in New York, so that's a distance of three and a half thousand miles. I'm editing native ProRes 422 media down a 100 megabit connection in my office in London. And really I could be anywhere at this stage. So I can skip through the video and the best part of this whole integration 
and the, indeed the best part of Adobe Anywhere for Video, is there's no new edit tool to learn. It is the Adobe Premiere that I know and love, that I've used as an editor, and I can continue to work with it so there's no disruption to your editor. It's exactly the world as they know it. They just don't need to have the physical media on a drive next to their machine or to be connected to that network storage in order to work. I also mentioned that the metadata sync in A-Frame is bi-directional. So let's take this clip here. Let's look at its markers again. Let's add a marker to the clip in Premiere. So this marker came from the edit. When I share my changes back to the central production database, then immediately back in A-Frame, if I open that clip, this marker came from the edit. So again, you can see how we can both benefit as the editor and also the production staff and post-production staff from one consolidated database of metadata. So we've taken out the need to invest in an infrastructure to stream and play back your high resolution video. We've taken out the need for an asset management system that piggybacks off the back of this arrangement. And we've consolidated that all into one combined product offering. Back in Premiere, I can continue to build up my shot selection. So I'll just mark an in, begin playing back. Hit an out. And let's add this to the edge of my collection here. What I'm going to do now is just quickly apply some default transitions so you can see how the timeline begins to composite that on the server side and, and present it back to me. As I skip through the video now here at a frame at a time, you'll see that we have a standard uh, dissolve coming in. So I'm not going to create a, a very elegant edit here. I'm just going to put these shots together to show you the mechanisms of the technology in place. And at this stage, I should say thank you very much to our friends at Vice Media who have allowed us to demonstrate the technology using this media. This is the chef Matty Matheson who stars in their Keep It Canada show, which is um, broadcast on their Munchies channel. So now we've got a, a timeline that we've built up and we could build this up in the usual way, adding clips, adding effects and transitions. But when it comes to the export of this selection here, this sequence, the good news is that I'm not limited by the range of options uh, that I have available to me. So it's exactly the same set of options that I would have if I was editing locally. Because again, all of my edit actions and all of my interactions with the media is based upon the premise that I am referring directly to the source media, not a proxy file, but the source media itself, which sits on the A-Frame server. So I can output this as AVC Intra. I could output it as XD Cam. I'm not limited to merely a web deliverable spec or, or something similar. So let's push this out and let's queue it. And it's only a short file, so it shouldn't take very long to be generated and be uploaded to the A-Frame. So as this export happens back on the server, the A-Frame project actually lies in wait and receives the resultant file. So that now we have a new original in the A-Frame project, an OP1A MXF original that we can share with either the broadcast that needs it or the international group partners that need it or simply share it out for review and approval. So if I move back to A-Frame, you'll see that I've got a new clip available. And there's my sequence that I just built in New York on a shared office line in London. Now at this point I could share this out for review and approval with another team member. Or I could indeed have my dispersed stakeholder come in and take out the metadata and the file itself and pull it down into another environment for reversion editing. Or, at any stage, I could relate back to the exact master media and the exact timeline, configure this again, make changes, add new transitions, re-export and review in the project before I'm happy with what I need, and then I can push it along, crucially, 
for delivery. So that's just a quick overview in terms of how the integration works. We would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, please do get in touch via the contact form on aframe.com. Thanks very much.